Hey all, how you doing today? CVMG coming back at you with some more Mad Tail Idol RPG, and boy do I have just a treat for you today. So the developer actually linked a section of worthwhile units. So in, on its bare bones, this is like the alpha version of our developer's tier list. Our developers, by the way, are the ones that invented these abilities. They created the characters, they crafted the code, so if anybody knows what they're talking about, it's going to be this guy. And wow, has tier list been the highest requested question I've been receiving all week. So let's just go ahead and not this out of the park, we're going to call this the alpha version of our Mad Tail Idol RPG tier list. Now this isn't like a traditional tier list with S through F because it's alpha stage. So we have S partners, ones that you can definitely rely on, A partners, ones that are pretty good, heal partners because healing is pretty rare in this game, and buff partners because pro players capitalize on buffs. All right, now with all of that out of the way, I feel like I haven't wasted too much time. We could just go ahead and get into the list. Now our number one recommended is going to be Puss in Boots. Now this is a violent damage dealer. Every time he hits somebody, if he crits them, he launches another attack. Not to mention your abilities can crit and uh, this ability has a ridiculous multiple that also boasts 15% of the enemy's max HP. This coupled with the extra hits and the self buffing, the self crit rate buffing, the self attack buffing, this guy is just going to deal the most damage possible. The caveat moving on to our next character is Mr. Puss in Boots over here is the single target king. So he's gonna be really good for the guild dragon, really good for those hard bosses, but not quite as good for groups as Cinderella. Now Cinderella is gonna be your area of effect counterpart and I think she's awesome. She's on my main team. Every time she gets hit, she counter attacks, kind of like Holder from Infinite Magic Raid. Anybody that's familiar with that will get it. This ultimate is an area of effect attack that deals hefty damage and leaves a bleed on the foe, so it's not just one hit wonder, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Plus, every time she basic attacks, she gets a 15% crit rate buff for two rounds. So you don't even have to build that much crit rate on her to start seeing some crits. And finally, the third highest ranked is Mercury. Now this is gonna be one of our more rare archetypes, so you're not going to be able to farm this guy as free to play. But for anybody lucky enough to happen upon a couple copies, then you definitely have a lot at your disposal here. These two acts is above his head, whenever he attacks, they actually apply a debuff, and then his abilities get bonus effects, depending on how many debuffs the enemy has. Like this ability with the tremendous damage, but the kicker is if the enemy has both marks, you steal 50 energy from him. That's OP. He's got a defense break that deals bonus damage based on the enemy's max HP, and he applies these marks simply just by basic attacking the enemy, so it's not like there's a crazy prerequisite to get these crazy effects in his abilities. Okay, now moving down to the A tier, we got Veronica the Scissor Girl. I'm using her on my team. I'm actually a pretty big fan of her as well. Whenever she dies, now I'm usually the first one to say, dying is a terrible strategy. You don't want dying in your strategy. Well, Scissor Girl, whenever she dies, she not only applies a bleed, she not only applies a poison, but she applies both. Now I myself am taking advantage of a damage over time team, so I just think she's the perfect frontliner to die. <laughs> But that's not even it. She has crazy single target damage. Like that ability she uses, she just stabs the same dude over and over. It looks like a prison crime. Plus her basic attacks have a chance to poison and she's just all around a really good damage dealer. Moving on now we have Snow White. I must have just be the best theory crafter ever because she's also on my team. And I'll tell you this ultimate is ridiculous. The damage is great, don't get me wrong, but the accuracy reduction is where it's at. This is one of those things that people overlook. Her basic attacks reduce the enemy's crit rate and that ability reduces their accuracy. The dude may as well just be useless. She's also a great frontliner to pair with the Scissor Girl because the Scissor Girl dies and the enemies get damaged. You bring Snow White's health down to half and then the enemy gets a defense break and your team gets an attack buff. So you're just ready to sweep them at that point. And Archie the crit damage bomber. This dude gets a crit damage buff every single round. His ultimate just straight up gives him a 30% crit rate and crit damage buff as well. Then every time he crits, he heals himself. Now this sounds godlike and the early game, unfortunately, it's not going to be too great because you're gonna need a pretty high crit rate to take advantage of all of this, but that being said, once you're at that point where you have some pretty high level secrets and you have his crit rate at like 80%, this is going to be by far the strongest damage dealer in the game. All right, now we're getting into some healers and healers are pretty scarce in this game, so this is the part of the video you're gonna wanna pay attention. We have the Flower King, all right? He's capable to deal area of effect healing, so he heals everybody on your team with the same ability and his basic attacks heal himself. So you don't have to worry about him dropping and he helps you not have to worry about your team dropping. Prince Charming is more like burst healing. He drops healing bombs all over the battlefield 
shield, like multi heals that can hit the same target more than one time. And he's got this scissor girl thing going, but with the opposite function. So if he dies, everybody gets a heal. Up next being recommended as a healer, we actually have a lower tier, the snow soldier. And I absolutely agree. He would be great for a healer for your team. Even just his basic attacks heal your back line. And finally moving on to their buffer and debuffer recommendations. You can't just muscle through everything. Sometimes you got to strategize. Now these are the ones that are going to help you with that strategy. Now the mermaid shrinks enemies, making them deal less damage, but she also has an area of effect stun. And that is super useful for almost every situation. And next up, we have the water spirit. She's another one of those rare characters. It's going to be hard to build for free to play, but she has two forms, a white form and a black form. Essentially, you get to choose what form you want her to take. You can either have her as an attacker or have her as a sort of a tank. Depending on what stat of hers you've built higher, she will take whichever form. She also has a really good bonus feature where anytime she gets controlled, she just gets a shield. So that's really good for dealing with crowd control. Next is going to be our sea witch, another hard one for those free to play players to get. But if you do get your hands on this one, you got yourself a great character. This is our silencer. So she's going to stop people from casting their spells altogether. They don't even get to use them. She'd also be a great addition to a bleed team. And then the icing on the cake is whenever she falls below half HP for the first time, she removes all crowd control effects and goes back to full health. So that's awesome. Up next is Harsh Lady. She has an area of effect root, which is essentially a stun. It just prevents the enemies from taking any actions and that hits multiple enemies. So that's very good. And finally, they recommend Star Witch. Now she has a very interesting gimmick. Whenever her HP falls below 30%, there's a 50-50 shot that she just exchanges her HP with an enemy. So by losing, you could in turn make yourself win. But that's not all she does. Of course, she can polymorph enemies. Polymorph is like a crowd control that prevents the enemies from taking any actions. But if they receive up to like three ultimates or something like that, then they break out of the poly morph. Still a very good crowd control, and this is obviously a very good character. And there it is, guys. That's the developer section for worthwhile units. Now, they've gone ahead and laid out the groundwork for us to start working on a tier list. If anything, they provided us a little bit of context on some more of the characters, and if you're completely lost, you have something to go after. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. If you liked the video, then please feel free to subscribe and join my Discord, but other than that, y'all, that's gonna do it for me today, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.